All right, so I think we can actually kick off. Uh, uh, I'll try to replay what we did, what we ended two weeks ago. Apologies for for um, for missing last week, Nathan. Um, I'm really interested in getting this book <laughs> over with, so I'm trying my best not to miss any classes anymore. Uh, but last week, last week happens to be something quite impromptu that I really couldn't shake. Um, so apologies for that. Uh, one more time. All right, so um, where did we end up? So uh, let me just go back to the beginning, right? Um, we were on chapter 20 and we were talking about a chapter called Many Models with Pearl and Broom. We'll talk about Broom at the end of this chapter. One of the things I think I mentioned last time was we were actually not doing any kind of modeling, right? We we're just looking at ways to kind of wrangle our data essentially for before we can kick up actually modeling work, right? So that's what this entire chapter is about. And the, the parts that we're going to be discussing today, it's, it's a fallout of this gap minder package. And at some point we did mention the concept around a list column. So a list column is just like a, like a data structure, but it just makes things a bit more, bit more easier to work with in a way, right? So, so everything we're going to be talking about in this meeting is about that list column, how to create a list column, what functionality can you get from it? Then we end up with, uh, with Broom, uh, the, the Broom package itself. So let me go to list column. All right, so I think I left a note here. All right, so I, I think everything I just mentioned is kind of here, All right? So we talked about list column in the Gapminder package. Um, then this part just drills down into the influence of this list column itself. Um, and again, like I said, we're not creating models, we're just learning about things that can make our work a bit more simple. So let's start with list columns. So it says, now that we've gone through a basic workflow for managing many models, we can dive back into some of the details. An example of detail here is the list column. Um, in this section, we explore the list column data structure in a little bit more detail. Um, so list colon are uh, implicit in the definition of the data. As we go as we go on, you will see this concept play out over and over again. So this data frame kind of concept play out over and over again, right? So a data frame is an is a named list of equal length vectors, right? Um, something very close to an Excel spreadsheet. But just imagine equal length vectors. A list is a vector. So it's always been legitimate to use a list as a column um, of a data frame, right? So base R doesn't make it easy for us to create list column and data frame treats lists as a list of this column itself, right? So I'm guessing the question is going to be, what exactly is the use of this list column? Why can't I just use a data frame if a list column is, uh, is influenced by a data frame itself? So to learn more about that, let's learn a bit more about data frames. So again, data frame is a named list of equal length vectors, right? So let's try to create a data frame here. We pass that through the data frame function. X equals, uh, we have this vector, one, two, three, eight, two, five, right? Notice it shows up this way, one, two, three, three, four, five, right? So you can prevent um, this data frame from doing this if you actually add this I, this I, right? So let's try to add this I. So we do um, data frame, X is, so I run X through, um, I, I run this through I, and I create a different colon Y by creating a vector one, two, three, five. Now, the good thing here is just notice where this um, inverted, uh, what do you call these things are? Um, uh, inverted commas are, what do you call these things? <laughs> um, just, just notice where they are, right? So you notice that for Y, it creates this as, as one row um, and creates this as a second row, right? So that's, that's a data frame. A table alleviates this problem by making things a bit more simple. So instead of running through this data frame function, I can literally just do a table. Essentially very similar to a data frame. I think we learned about table very early on in this, in this, in this book. Um, it, it just gives a bit more summary of everything that we're dealing with. So a summary here and a summary of the 
type of data we're actually working with here, right? So run this through a table, create X, create a list, and create Y, similar to how we discussed earlier. Uh, but now you can see that we have created a table, a two by two um, table, right? Um, the first bit has um, three integers, so one, two, three, three, four, five, right? So that's why it's integer three. And the character bit also has one, two, three, four, five. Again, notice where the um, inverted commas are, right? This is made a bit more simple if you use a triple, right? So we walk through data frame, through a table, and now through a triple, right? Because it automatically works out what you need. Oops, sorry, automatically works out that you need a list, right? So I walk this through a table. I can easily just specify what the columns are um, or what, I, what my data is. So X and Y, same, same, same data format, but now at least it can easily work out that I'm looking for a list without actually specifying this list itself, right? So I said, list colors are most useful as an intermediate status structure, right? They are hard to work with directly because most R functions work with atomic vectors and data frames. But the advantage of keeping related items together um, in a data frame is, is, is worth the ASU, right? So like I said, the question can easily be here, why exactly do I need to work with a list colon if two things, one, it's an intermediate structure, then B, most of the functions I'm going to use probably work with data frames, right? So, are, so they try to um, give an idea of what is called an effective list colon pipeline, right? But I guess before we go that, the major advantage that the book was trying to flag here is I can keep related items together, I can keep it in a data frame, um, and that makes things a bit more easy to work with. Right. So what, what are these three parts of the, an effective list colon pipeline? The first part is we can create a list colon itself. If you identify that this list colon is, a lot, is useful for the analysis that you want to use it for, you can create a list colon using nest, summarize plus list, or use a mutate and a map function, right? Uh, we'll talk about creating list colon next. You can create other intermediate list colon by transforming existing list colon with map, map2, or pmap, right? Or you can simplify the list colon back down to a data frame or atomic vector. I think this is quite important, right? Uh, because like I said, most of the functions you're going to be working with here um, are probably expressed in a data frame. So let's, let's walk through the idea of creating a list colon, right? So he said, typically you won't create a list column with table, like everything that we, we did up here, right? Instead, you will create them from regular columns, right? Uh, just regular information itself using three methods. Number one is nest, so tidy our nest. Number two is mutate, then number three is summarize, right? Um, alternatively, alternatively, you can create them from a list using table and frame, right? So let's talk about creating it with Nest. I think we talked about Nest early on in this chapter. Itself. It's just a way to summarize or to, um, to, to, to lean particular columns that you have in your, in your, in your data frame, essentially. Right? So Nest creates a nested data frame, which is a data frame with a list colon of data frames. So imagine, you have data frames, you're trying to kind of condense a bit. That's what Nest tries to do. Right. So in a nested data frame, each row is a meta observation. Then the colon gives variables that define the observation, like country and continent that we discussed earlier in this chapter. And the least colon of data frames give the individual observations that make up the meta observation, right? So there are two ways to Nest, right? Um, one way is, we, I, I think what we've been working with has been a group data frame. We have done that using this group by function, right? When applied to a group data frame, Nest keeps the grouped column as is and bundles everything into a list column. So we walk through our gap minor package. A reminder that the gap minor package just tries to show um, a number of information by continents, by year and different sorts of information, but it's a lot more about like life expectancy and GDP per, cap per capita or something like that, right? So we are grouping this data frame by country and continent, right? 
sorry, we are, yeah, we're grouping this data that we have here by country and continent, and we are nesting it, right? So you notice I have my country colon, I have my continent colon. Every other thing has been nested within this list itself, right? I can also use it on an ungrouped data frame, right? So I don't have this group by, I literally just pipe my nest function into my, my GapMinder packet, my GapMinder data itself. In this, in this way, I pipe it and I'm trying to nest everything from here to GDP per capita, which is what is nested in here, right? So that's essentially how you create a list colon with, uh, with nest function. Just use the pipe argument itself and you know, things become easier. You can do it with a grouped colon if you want to group these two uh, or any other columns I identify, or you could just do it directly by piping nest through the gap minder itself. Right. Um, second way of creating a list column, we can do it with from vectorized functions, right? Um, so some useful function take an atomic vector and return a list. Uh, for example, uh, we learned about um, string house string split, which takes a character vector and returns a list of character vectors. Um, and you can use that inside mutate and you get a, a list column. So first, let's try to create our data. We run that through a triple. Um, like I said, it kind of identifies that you need a list a lot easier. Um, so it has given you two rows, right? A, B, C, and D, E, F, G, right? I, I, I run this object that I create through the mutate function, right? I'm trying to add an extra colon, which is what mutate usually does, right? Trying to add an extra colon, and I'm asking it to kind of create it in a list colon format itself, right? So you notice that my X1 shows up here. I have my normal data that I created, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now I've created a second colon called X2, and I've, and I've added um, uh, each of these in there, right? And it just spells out the character that I have. So these are three characters because they are done within this um, inverted commas. Um, and this has four characters because they are done within these inverted commas. Right. Um, so obviously, if I want to see what I have done in here, I can use the unnest function. It just goes back to everything that we kind of did up here, like the nest and unnest idea itself. Right. So if I want to see everything that it has actually created, I can just use everything I create here, then pipe it through an unnest function, right? So now I can see that I have A, B, C, and the characters that I have. But you notice that the way I created my X2 colon, I created my X2 colon as A, B, C, D, E, F, G on a single colon, which is why my X1 is now being repeated, right? So A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, D, E, F, G, right? So it says, if you find yourself using this pattern a lot, you can make sure to check out um, tidy our separate rows. It is a wrapper around, around this common pattern, right? An example of the pattern is using map, map2 and pmap functions from poor, right? So I think that takes us back to, um, I think it takes us back here, right? So if you want to transform existing this column, we can use this. And for us to use this, we need to run our package for, right? Um, so the first bit is, um, so, for, so let me, let me go back here. So another example of this pattern. So every pattern that we created up here, um, is using map to map, map to and pmap functions from port. For example, we can take the final example from invoking different functions and write it to mutate. So let's, let's try with this itself. So I create my object called same. I run it through a triple. I'm trying to create two major columns here. Um, and you know they have their own formulas. So run if um, I'm on um, an hour course, right? So I've, I've identified what the range of numbers are going to look like um, for, for all of this, right? So I run my sim, I pipe my sim through the muted function, right? And I create an extra colon um, of invoke map uh, where F, uh, invoke mark f pass these two columns itself. So it's 10, 10, um, 10 uh, what do you call that thing? 10, um, 10 items, I guess, that's what you probably call it. 
right? So it creates the, the colon I have just specified. So my F, my params, and the sims that I just created with this mutated function, right? And you notice that my F has run if I run our voice, right? Our uh, params has exactly what I have requested for it to be here, and sims exactly the same thing, right? So technically, same is not homogeneous because it contains both double and integer vectors. Um, um, I guess this, right? However, this is unlikely to cause many problems since integers and doubles are numeric vectors. I guess it's just extra information for you to just be careful the type of data that you're creating within your H dot colon itself in case you want to do any analysis on it, right? Um, so the third way, is from multi-valued summaries, right? Um, so again, this takes us back to this. So we've mentioned how can we actually create this colon itself? So we're talking about number three now. We've talked about the nest, about mutates. Now we're talking about summarize, right? So one restriction of summarize is that it only works with summary functions that return a single value, right? So that means you can use it with functions like quantile that return a, a vector of arbitrary length, right? Let's, let's try this with a data set that is a bit more quantitative. So empty cars, um, we want to group that by cylinder, then summarize um, and create a new colon called Q, which will be the quantile of MPG. MPG is a colon within this empty cars itself, right? Um, so he said, you can, however, wrap the results in a list. This obeys the contract of summarize because each summary is now a list, a vector of length one. And so let's do exactly the same thing. But instead of running this as naked here, you can literally put it within um, a list itself. So what does this give us? First part is the cylinder colon that we requested. Second part is the Q colon that we just created, right? And it tries to create that in, like you said, creating it in a double, right? Um, so at least we don't have any integers here, right? So to make useful results with unnest, you need to capture the probabilities. So this is just a factor of the, um, the data set that we're currently working with. So we create another object. We have um, assumed probabilities created by a vector. Um, and we, are, we exactly want to pipe that through this summarize function. We are creating this, a list of these probabilities itself and every other thing that we have kind of created. But now we have a list of both these probabilities and MPG and probabilities, right? Um, and we are calling one P and the other Q. You notice that that also creates exactly what we just designed. The extra bit here is now at least we have a probability that we have kind of um, identified the hour curves looking for the quantile within these two variables itself. So if we unnest it, everything becomes a bit a bit clearer, right? As opposed to this summarized version that we have here. Right. Final bit is from a named list. So this is just extra detail, right? So a data frame with list colons provide a solution to a common problem. Um, uh, what do you do if you want to iterate over both, both of the contents of a list and its element? Instead of trying to jam everything into one object, it is often easier to make a data frame. One colon can contain the elements and the other colon can contain the list. An easy way to create such a data frame from a list is table and frame. So this is a lot of words. Let's try to see what the code would look like. I create an X object. I run it through a list. I want it to have three different things, right? So A, B, C. Right, and I run, I, I now create an object with an M frame of what I created up here. Um, essentially, it just literally creates like, um, essentially the list colon idea we're looking for, right? So a table, um, three rows, two colons, and you know, um, nests this itself, uh, summarizing whatever is in this, in this version. You notice that these are five integers, this is two, this is two. That's why this is five to two. So I said the advantage of this structure is that it generalizes in a straightforward way. Names are useful 
if you have a character vector of metadata, but don't help if you have other types of data or multi, multi vectors, right? So if you want to iterate over names and values in parallel, you can use map two, right? Um, so let's just run through this entire thing, but I think it's very similar to what we've done up there. So I create my DF, my DF object mutates. I want to create a new column. Um, I run this new column by map two character, name, value, um, and uh, the string out string C, um, dot X and this and this. I'm not sure what this means though. So if someone can please help me explain this, that would be fine. I think this might mean um, I'm taking a subset of my Y colon itself, but I'm not sure why the dot is in front of it. I, I don't know if anybody has any, any ideas there. Uh, usually the dot I think means n character, but why? I I'm not sure either what try to do tries to do here, but yeah, it seems that you have any character in Y, and then he selects one. Let's see. Let's see. Let me just see what that X and Y looks like. DF X and Y. I think I think it was created from this. That's where we got the DF object itself. Right. So we have the two first columns that we created. So A, B, C, and these integers. Um, yeah, I, I I would try to figure out what it tries to. But I mean, the way I kind of interpreted this was, since I'm trying to create a new colon, um, everything that is within this is just extra information for me to get the objects within that new column itself. So the SMRY, and that's the name, the value, which is this ABC and this value itself. And I identify that, so if I go back to this, um, the first items in each of this, um, in, the y, in the value column itself is one to 135, which is why 135 shows up here. We are putting this as, I guess we are, we are forcing that colon in there, which is why it's quoted uh, itself. So that's why it's, have, that's why it's A um, uh, with a colon and one. So choose the first object in, in, the, in the Y colon itself. That's how I interpreted it. And that made sense to me. What I didn't get was why there was a dot <laughs> in front of it. Well, I, I guess we could probably, we'll probably dig into that. Right. So, so everything we've talked about here is like, it's just how to create a list column. So again, like I said, we've identified that a list column makes your work in modeling a bit easier because it helps you nest, it helps your nest. You can easily summarize your data and it makes you do a bit, a bit more things and a bit more condensed to it. Um, sometimes it will work because like I said, um, uh, most of the functions that at least I work with usually works with a bit more, with, works a lot more with data frames, not list column. So this is my first time trying to learn about this column itself. Um, so everything we've talked about has been uh, creating that list column itself. The second part is now simplifying the list column uh, itself. So I've created this list. I have the summarizer that I can nest it, I can nest it. How can I actually summarize it? So it says, to apply the techniques of data manipulation and visualization that we have learned in this book, we will need to summarize the list column back to regular column an atomic vector or at least a set of vector, a set of columns, which essentially probably be like a data frame, right? So if you want to do any kind of visualization itself, I think it will probably be difficult for you to want to run your list column through a ggplot, for example. It probably makes sense for you to, especially if the columns that you want to express are within those summarized columns that you have created with the next function, for example, right? So it's, a bit, it's kind of be a bit more useful if you can express it on nested itself. So he said, the technique you use to collapse back, um, collapse back down to a simpler structure depends on whether you want a single value per element or multiple values. Very similar to the next idea that we used. That we used here. So if you want a single value, so apparently our next value kind of just literally nest everything without any caution. So it just gives you the multiple values. But if you want, if you want single values, you can use mutates 
you can use map underscore LGL. You can use map underscore integer. I'm assuming that's what this means. You can also use map underscore double and map underscore character. I'm also assuming that's what this means, right? To create an atomic vector, right? So, so let's, let's try to see how each of them plays out uh, one by one. Let's try with the mutates and every other one, right? So essentially I create a new DF object. I run it through a triple. Again, a triple is useful because it's already, it identifies for me where I need a list. And I can see that a list is needed here where I have letters, one to five, one to three, and run it five, right? I, I pipe a mutate function here because I'm trying to create um, two new columns, type and length, right? My first colon has five characters, five, three, five, so five, three and five, right? My second colon, which is map underscore character has this X uh, we type of, right? So it shows the type of which is so character, integer and double. So character, integer, double, right? My third colon maps uh, the integer length itself. So I'm specifying the length of that integer itself, right? So I did specify the character and also specify the integer, so 535. Exactly what I just said, 535, right? So this is the basic information. So we have created this itself. This is the basic, the same basic information you would get from the default TBO print method. But now you can use this for filtering, right? This is a useful technique. If you have an heterogeneous list, I want to filter out parts that are not working for you, okay? Um, so I, I think we learned about this filtering when we're doing, uh, when we're doing these pipe functions itself during the Rangu, Rangu, one of the Rangu chapters itself. So if you want to filter out columns. Right, so. so don't forget about the map underscore star shortcuts. You can use map underscore character X apple, right? So you can put it in quotes to extract the string stored in apple for each element of X. This is useful for pulling apart next nested lists in regular columns. You can also use dot null argument to provide a value to use if the element is missing instead of returning null. Let's see how this plays out. So we have df run that through a triple. It creates a list for me. I have two lists. I run that through mutate. I create two new columns. Map on the scroll double. I'm trying to select the string with a, right? And I'm trying to select b. Everything that we just explained here. Right? And you notice that my X has two lists, so A and B. Um, my A has one and two, right? So one, two, um, and my B. Um, oh yeah, okay, I see that. So the fact that I'm calling just A selects this one and two, right? Um, the fact that I'm calling B selects this two, but because my, my second list doesn't have a B, it shows up as an NA, right? So that's if you want to do a bit more manipulation. Now, if you want to do like multiple columns at the same time, we use unnest. I think we've learned about this earlier. Um, unnest works by repeating the regular columns once and for each element of the list column, right? For example, in the following very, very simple example, we repeat the first row four times because um, the first element has length four and the second row once, right? So let's try to understand this a bit more. So table um, X and Y has a list of this. I want to unnest Y. So since Y has a list of this and I'm trying to unnest this, you notice that it has one, three, four. I think we did that earlier. Uh, we have one, three, four, then we have one. And that's why this is being repeated, right? So this one is going with this one, two, three, four. Then this two is going with this one, right? So this means you can simultaneously unnest two columns that contain a different number of elements. Right? So let's let's see what that looks like. So he said because y and z have the same number of elements in every row, right? So I have x, my x column, my y column, and my z column. My y column is this and this. Then my Z colon is one, two, and three, right? So I create DF1. 
right? So I, I, I try to view what DF1 looks like. So the first bit I've created this, DF1 shows me my one and two, shows me my two character A and B uh, because they are quoted, right? So, so you get character, then shows me my C, shows me the integers that I have one, I have two integers, then one double. Right. And if I try to unnest what y, y and z would look like, um, then it just tries to break that out for me. So again, because I'm repeating A and B, you can see one, one shows up here, one, two, then two, C, three, then two, C, three, yeah, right? So it doesn't work because Y and Z have different number of elements, right? Let's try to do a DF2, essentially the same idea, um, the only difference is I'm trying to create a vector of B and C. Okay, right. So essentially, we're doing everything. We're doing the same, the same idea itself. So X has one and two. A has one character, two characters. This is two integers and one double. So if I try to unnest it, it gives me an error because all nested columns must have the same number of, of elements. Right. I see. So I'm guessing the error is because, so since this is not matching to this and this is not matching to this, that's why it's not waiting to unnest because it will be difficult for you to get an output like this. Right. So the final part of this chapter, you know, talks very briefly about the bone package. Right? So um, we've talked about uh, Paul package earlier. After that, we talked about list columns, um, how to create list columns and how to simplify them. Then we are ending the chapter with um, Broom. So the Broom package provides three general tools for turning models into tidy data frames, right? Um, so the first one is Broom grants model. So it returns a row for each model. Each column gives a model summary, um, either a measure of model weight or complexity or the combination of the two, right? Um, then you have Broom tidy model, right? So it returns a row for each coefficient in the model. Each column gives an information about the estimates and its variability. And we have the Broom augment model and data, right? Which returns, returns a row for each row in data, adding extra values like residuals and inference statistics. Right? So we can learn a bit more with the Broom package um, if you actually want to do this. So let me just copy this and I'll paste it in the chat itself quote marks thank you very much Mariana. <laughs> i always call them inverted commas but i i know they are kind of double commas in a way right so so that that brings me to the end of this chapter um i think we're very close to ending this book now <laughs> i'm very excited about that we have four more chapters to go but just one more part which is communicate i think based on our uh, on our sign up sheet i think marilena is meant to take um this part so you could please confirm Marlena if you are taking this part yes yes that's correct um the next one to present communicate perfect so that brings me to the end of of um of uh, of this chapter itself i hope it has made some sense i, I really did wish right. this chapter Thank had you. a bit more model building but it seems to just be a bit more about data wrangling i guess yeah i mean it, it was a very long chapter i mean uh, you did a great job <laughs> presenting for Thanks, all this time. Yeah, awesome. I'm very happy we're progressing. Exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Daniel. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank Thanks. you. So Thanks. we're not meeting next week, right? Due to the time. Yeah, no meeting. Thing. No meeting next week, but in two weeks. Yes. yes. Okay, in two weeks. Yeah. All right. All right. So, all right. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you.